In this lecture, we're going to go through how to analyze contrast from analysis of variance problems. So the learning objectives is very simple for this. It's to be able to test pairwise differences between groups from an analysis of variance model. So in the last lecture, we had gone through an example where we have analyzed um, the body weight after intervention for three different diets, and this is in mice. A high-fat casein diet, a high-fat whey diet, and a low-fat casein diet. And we see that it seems like there is a slightly higher level for the high-fat casein diet compared to the two others, but maybe there's also some differences here. When we analyze the data by an ANOVA model, that is this guy here, we get that it's very unlikely very unlikely that the body weight from the free diets comes from the same distribution. That means that at least one, at least one of the groups is off. This we formulated as a model here and a hypothesis and concluded the test. So we formulate a model where we say, well, the individual data comes from a group, which is exemplified by a mean, and then some variation around, which is this small number EI, and the, this one is normally distributed by mean zero and a variance, an independent. And then we formulate a hypothesis, which says that the group means are all the same, and the alternative that at least one is off. Then we conclude from the table of uh, the an over table, whether to pursue with the alternative or stick with the null hypothesis. And in this example that we look on here is where we say, well, it's very unlikely that the null hypothesis is true. So we pursue the alternative that at least one group is off. But that raises the question whether all groups are different from all groups or whether it's only a single group, a single treatment which gives elevated levels compared to the others. And that is what we mean by contrasts. That is zooming in on the individual pairwise combinations of groups and test whether they are different. So here we have the data table and what we need from this table is especially the variance term for the residuals in order to calculate the contrasts. So the contrasts can be exemplify it in two ways. Either we construct a confidence interval for the difference between pairwise, pairwise of pairs of means, so this is between group 1 and group 2, or we do a test. So here is the confidence interval. So the confidence interval for the difference between two means is exactly the same as you learned for a two-sample t-test. The only difference here is that instead of having this SX pooled, we use from the ANOVA table the variance for the residuals. And the variance for the residual is this MSE. Further, we also use the degrees of freedoms, which have been used to calculate the MSE. The rest is the same. So this one is 1 over the number within group 1, 1 over the number within group 2, the mean in group 1, the mean in group 2, a T fractal to, to, uh, to uh, get the coverage of the confidence interval. So this is one way. And this is written up here, where we use the MSE from the ANOVA table, comparing group 5 and 2, for instance. Another alternative is to do a test. So instead of doing a confidence interval, we do a test where we state the hypothesis that the null, that the two means are, are, are equal, with the alternative that the two means are different. We construct a test statistics. This is exactly the same as a two-sample t-test. The difference between the means divided by the, the variance, square root of the variance for the residuals, and then the square root over the square root of the numbers within each group in an inverse form here. 
And then this test statistics is translated into a p-value, and this is exactly the same as a two-sample t-test. The only difference is that we use the ANOVA table to get the numbers for the residual variance and the residual degrees of freedom. So the analysis of variance cookbooks goes like this, and what we want to focus on here is that we want to compare contrast with confidence intervals for the difference and maybe a test for whether the difference could be zero. So let's return to our example. So here we, we see that, it's, that there is a significant effect of the factor fat protein and what we would like to test is whether the difference between these two groups, the high fat whey and the low fat casein, are significant. And we do that by constructing a confidence interval. So what we would like to do here is to compare high fat whey with low fat casein. And we do that by constructing a confidence interval. And that goes by taking the average of the one group, high fat whey, minus the average of the other group, low fat casein, then plus minus, which is the band around this difference, where we take a t value at one minus alpha, the degrees of freedoms, times the square root of the MSE, times one over the number in high fat whey, plus one over the N in low fat casein. So what I need here is to get the two means and the numbers within each group and the variance term. To get the means, I use a very nice function in R, which is called model tables, which returns me some numbers for, for the individual factors in my model. And so here I get the numbers, but these numbers are actually not uh, directly reflecting the means of the group. So, but what I can do is I can say, well, what type do I want? I want the means to be returned. So here I get the mean within each group. So high fat is 3.6, high fat whey is 3.2, and so forth. And further, I get the numbers, how many is included in each of the individual groups. So here I have the two numbers that I wish to compare, 3.5 and 3.4, and then 15 and, and 10. Further, I would like to get the mean squared error, which is this number here. So these numbers I simply just transfer to the equation here. So here is the average of the one group, the average of the other group, the MSE, the square root of it, and the numbers. Then I need this fractile here, the T fractile at some degrees of freedom. And this one I calculate by using QT, that is a function in R, which gives me the quartile at some quantile at some level of the t-test, and I want a 95% confidence interval. So I take the 975 um, position, and then I use the degrees of freedoms for the residuals, which is 37. Over here, and it returns me 2.03. So this, I simply chuck in here, 2.03. If we do the math on, on these numbers, we will get that the confidence interval is 0 0.08 plus minus 0 0.09. That means that, in general, this level is higher by 0 0.08 compared to the low fat casein, but with a significant spread around with 0 0.09, so the confidence interval goes from, from negative 0 0.01 to positive 0 0.17, um, indicating that these two groups are not are borderline significantly different. 
we can also do a test and in order to do a test we answer the question which is could these two uh, mean levels of the different dyes be equal that is the null hypothesis with the alternative of them not being equal the test statistics for this test is a t statistics so we calculate it by subtracting the two means and divide by some relevant measure of the spread here we can simply just chuck in the numbers in order to get the statistics so if put in the numbers which are exactly the same numbers as up here we get a t statistic a test statistics of 1.87 and if you want to translate that to a p-value, say, well, that's the probability of the t distribution with the number of degrees of freedom that we have for the, for the mean squared error is larger than or equal to the observed t statistics. And then we multiply this by, by the number of 2 because the alternative hypothesis is not equal to, which means that deviation from the null is both when this guy is higher than this guy, but also when this guy is higher than this guy. We can calculate this number using R. So what we'd like to do is we would like to calculate the probability using the T distribution in the point 1.87 with 37 degrees of freedom. So this is the cumulative probability, but what we would like is the probability of getting a higher value then 1.87 not a lower so what we do is we say 1 minus this guy so this is the probability of the t distribution being higher than this one and then we simply take this number and multiply it by 2 and that is our p-value so we can put this in here 0 0.07 so what this tells us is that in terms of answering the question whether these two means could come from the same distribution, we'll say, well, that might be possible. At least it seems like there is some difference, but it could also be due to chance with this significance level, 0 0.07. So we would say this is not extremely significant, but there is some tendency. To conclude this talk, I'm going to show you how you can do all pairwise combinations of a, uh, of a one-way ANOVA um, contrast test. So we use a package called MULT COMPARE, which is multiple comparisons within a linear model, and this is a linear model. The first thing we need to do is we need to reformulate the model. And, and you see that up here, when we construct the model and do summary on it, or coefficients on it you get an intercept and then the effect of having way on top of uh, and the intercept here is the first group which is the low which is high fat casein that is the response and that is the intercept and then the value here is simply is not returned as the mean of this group but the difference between this group and this group and for the last part here is the difference between this group and this group. In order to get a model where each of the parameters simply reflects the mean of the first, second and third group, we put in a minus one here after the specification of the factor. In this way we'll get the mean of the individual groups. So no intercept, which this one is enforcing. Okay, then we should construct a matrix which has three parameters per row, simply uh, corresponding to the three parameters in the model, the one from each group, and so, and then a number in front which tells what should I multiply this number by, this number by, and this number by? So the first one I say 1 times this one, minus 1 times this one, and 0 times this one. So that will return the contrast of these two numbers. The second here, the second row is 1 here, and minus 1 here. So that will be the contrast between this number and this number. 
and so forth for the last one. So if I make this K matrix, I'll get the comparison between group 1 and 2, 1 and 3, and 2 and 3. Then I use this model, the function GLHT, on this model with the linear factors specified by K. And that produce a T objective where I'll have the estimates for each comparison. So this is the difference between group 1 and 2. And if we look over here, it seems like the group 2 is 3.5 and group 3 is 3.65. So yeah, that fits. This is 1 and 3 and that's slightly larger. So it's a good idea to just to check that the specification of the contrast is also giving estimates that are sound before doing the test. Then we would like to do the test on this objective T, and we do that by summary on T, and specify that we want univariate tests all over the place. So here we get all the linear combinations, 1 versus 2, and we see that that is this difference between these two groups, and it seems to be so large that it is very significant. 1 versus 3, so here there is even higher difference and it's even more significant. So the things match up. Then we have the test between group 2 and 3, which were also the test that we con conducted by hand here. And it reports us a p-value which is um, the same as the one that we concluded by hand giving a 0 0.07, saying that the difference between these two groups are probably not that, that great. So in conclusion, we can say, well, high fat seems to give higher body weight, but especially when it's combined with casein, because high fat and whey is not necessarily giving higher um, body weight, only slightly higher body weight compared to a low fat diet with casein in it.